Welcome to all this time. It's a great pleasure for me to open this WPRN 21 International Conference on the Impacts of the COVID-19 Pandemic. I'm Sadi Lalou, Chair of this conference, and with Olivier Bois, who will join us also tomorrow in the closing panel, one of the lead coordinators of the World Pandemic Research Network, WPRN. And I speak today on behalf of all those who behind the scenes have worked hard on a volunteer basis to build this network and make this conference possible. You all, over a thousand scientists, member of the network who have shared your research on WPRN. The 15 members of our international and interdisciplinary scientific advisory board, our 116 senior scientific reference, the 380 contributing institutions, among which I would like to single out our main supports, the International Science Council, the Union Académique Internationale, the European Alliance for the Social Sciences and the Humanities, the Network of European Institutes for Advanced Studies, the International Panel for Social Progress, UBIAS, the Network University-Based Institutes of Advanced Studies, and last but not least, the Fondation Maison des Sciences de l'Homme, who funded this conference. In passing, let me also thank the French Ministry of Research uh, who funded the WPRN network. The team at the Paris Institute for Advanced Study who maintains WPRN with the help of many cloud bots and Maxi Heitmeyer, uh, Secretary General of this conference. So a lot of people, a lot of work for something really great that will happen today and tomorrow. And of course, I thank and welcome especially those who will present the 39 selected communication, also our eight fabulous keynotes our great panel chairs and social members. Thank you. This is going to be an interesting flipped conference. And believe me, we'll have to get used to this new format and more to come. Because the pandemic changed our lives in many ways that we study in this conference and some of its impacts are here to stay for the better and for the worse. For the better, uh, among other things, the pandemic and the lockdown changed the way we do research. The innovative format of this conference, as well as the very nature of the WPRN, the World Pandemic Research Network, are a testimony to this change. They're both digital installations. Yes, colleagues, we're living an important transformative moment in the way research is done. Not just because we publish and meet online more and more, but because collective intelligence will now become a necessity to face the incoming global wicked problems. Precisely the way WPRN is organized is designed to foster that collective intelligence. The idea behind WPRN was that such a global problem as the pandemic required a global and speedy collaboration. Uh, the way it started actually is that uh, in the winter of uh, 2020, I mean, remember, I think it was in January or early February, we had uh, here at the Paris Institute of Advanced Study and, and, and at URIX, the European uh, Research Institute for uh, Chinese Studies, uh, a Chinese uh, researcher, uh, Zhang Xiaobo, uh, very good colleague who was at the time studying the impact that the pandemic had in China uh, with a very large survey uh, on SMEs, uh, economic impact. And uh, at, at this time here, we were not really conscious that the pandemic was, was looming and was, was growing. And, and what uh, uh, you know, Xiaobo uh, showed us um, in his conferences and in his work, and we shared this with the authorities here was, absolutely scary and impressive. And uh, then we realized that in China, they were a step ahead in, in dealing with that pandemic and that it was so useful to share this knowledge, but there was no instrument. And so uh, we, we tried to set that up to transfer the knowledge to enable collaboration and, and to spread 
uh, you know, the, the techniques to share the surveys, the questionnaires, uh, and everything. And, and uh, indeed, WPRN was, was operational very early on in March 2020. And uh, thanks to the IT infrastructure of the Parent Institute for Advanced Study, that is developed by Dr. Antoine Cordelois, and it, it gradually became a more sophisticated tool with more bots and services. And by the way, I really encourage you uh, to use its various features and to consult the meta analysis uh, on the resource page of uh, WPR. And WPR is, is a global free nonprofit infrastructure that facilitates sharing information and setting up collaboration with minimal transaction cost, high security, and high speed. We will need more of such tools, and they should be like WPRN, I think, academic run and non-profit. Because we will need more and more collaboration, especially in the social sciences and in the humanity. The, 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 the main problem uh, for collaboration uh, is actually not technical, as you know, it is social. Because once a team has started a project, uh, started working on it, then they often become reluctant to set set up new collaborations uh, for several reasons, some good, uh, some bad. And this creates silos, sometimes competing silos, and uh, it causes an enormous waste of time and resources. And there's so many opportunities missed, and, and our world cannot afford that anymore. And I, I must note here that our, our, our colleagues in natural sciences have been much better than us social scientists to organize globally. I would say it's, it's ironic that the specialist of social science of the social will be less good at it, but that's a fact. Um, and fortunately, things are changing, and our archipelago is is uh, our archipelago of disciplines of, of, of teams is, is getting more connected. And it's sad to say, but that is crucial because of um, I mean, mark my words, this COVID crisis is likely to be only the first of a lasting series of global crises, I mean, call them transitions if you prefer, but climatic, environmental, social, economic, and even more pandemics, I'm afraid. And to address these crises and transitions, it is social sciences and humanities that will have to be at the forefront uh, of research. And so for the first time ever with COVID-19, most social science team around the world started working at the same time on the same global problem. And more often than before, they worked with the aim of finding solutions or uh, with the aim of helping stakeholders, governments, as, uh, all kinds of organizations to find solutions. But so far, a lot of that work has been done independently. Uh, still, at least we have tried to keep track of what others are doing in real time, and that's important. And this is precisely what WPRN offers, the possibility of collaborating early on from project building stage before silos are created. And we must learn to work like this more and more uh, in agile and proactive collaboration because we'll have to do this often in the next decades to address the incoming transitions and to play a role of scientists in the society. Our archipelago must become a community. And this is what this conference uh, is about. Today and tomorrow in this WPRN 21 conference, we'll discuss a sample of the outcome of all the work uh, that you have done and uh, of the work in progress also on the impacts of COVID-19 on societies, organizations, and individuals. And as you will see, and as you have seen, because I guess that most of you have already watched uh, the videos online, uh, the crop is most interesting and original. Lowering the transaction cost and the barriers of access to this conference and to the network has provided us with a more diverse, global, and out-of-the-box series of work in contrast with uh, the more often mainstream research we encounter in usual conferences. Also, there is a great diversity of material, methods, and angles. This is truly global. This is rich and fertile ground, and it, it actually gives me hope for science and, and for the planet. 
So now I'm very much looking forward uh, for, to the panels, to the keynotes, to the discussions. This is the place where our larger community meets. And so let us make it count. I will see you again in the plenary tomorrow and especially for the closing panel on Friday at 6 p.m. Central European time. And we'll have to get used to uh, working with uh, different time zones and, and shifts. And we started doing this and actually it goes faster and it's not that bad. And so we'll have this panel where we go up from here. I wish you all a great, great conference. And now let me uh, introduce uh, Flore Guber, the vice president of the foundation Maison des Sciences de l'Homme in Paris, who sponsors uh, this conference. Uh, the foundation is an old, venerable, and great institution, uh, international, interdisciplinary. Uh, Flo will be followed uh, by uh, Maxi Heidmeier, uh, Secretary General of this conference, uh, whose face you see uh, above mine, who will tell you a bit more about the program and the procedures of the event. Thank you very much and uh, great conference. Hi, everybody. As one of the vice presidents of Fondation Maison Sciences de l'Homme, I am very happy to this is WPR in 2021 conference happening. And I warmly thank Sadi Lalou for inviting me to open it. We will for sure all remember a year 2021 when an unknown virus with a barbaric acronym SARS-CoV-2 spread across the planet. Since then, more than 5 million individuals have died, and this number could be actually three times as high. Many, many more have been infected and still struggle to fully recover from the virus. Public finances in many countries have significantly deteriorated. In short, the damages have been enormous. However, something positive came out. Year 2020 was also an extraordinary year for science. Almost as soon as SARS-CoV-2 was discovered, researchers worldwide work, started working on it in order to find ways to predict the virus spread, to provide rapid diagnosis tests, to create vaccines, etc. According to Nature, no less than 200,000 journal articles and preprints on COVID-19 related topics were published in 2020. While medical scientists have been on the front line in the fight against the virus, social scientists have also taken their part in this historic scientific effort. The contribution of the humanities and social sciences has indeed been essential to contribute to understanding and resolving the challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic, and so to inform public decision. As shown by the number of projects registered on the WPRN platform, a lot has been done to analyze the sociology and the geography of the virus prevalence, the social acceptance of the measures implemented to limit the spread of the virus, the impact of the pandemic on the economic forces and living conditions, on inequality, on social cohesion, on freedom and democracy, and this list of topics is far from being exhaustive. Insights of the humanities and social scientists have been undeniably crucial to address many of the questions that policymakers at local, national, and global levels have been dealing with in relation to COVID-19. The game is not over and research effort must continue. As part of this effort, WPRN is connecting researchers from all over the world, aggregating data and research outputs. This is also what FMSH is aiming to do, and this is the reason why we committed ourselves to providing support to this first online conference. I am fully convinced that new collaborations will emerge from it and that the cross-border perspectives will bring new insights and new evidence for politi political decision-making. I wish you two pleasant and productive days, and I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much virtually to, to Flora as well and for the Fondation for supporting this conference. Um, I'm Maxi Heidmeier, and uh, welcome to everyone from me as well. I'm the General Secretary of the conference. Um, this is quite an exciting occasion, and uh, we also hope you're all well and safe with the most recent COVID spreading rapidly again, so perhaps there's, there's more room for research as well. Over the course of the conference, we'll hear keynotes about economic epidemiology, the impact of COVID on businesses, safe transport during COVID, models for epidemic control policies, social cohesion and inequality during the pandemic, general trade-offs that were made because of COVID, sorry, generational trade-offs, um, emotional responses to the pandemic, and also what happens to trust in science and information during the pandemic. I think one that's really important for all of us. We'll also have six paper sessions highlighting WPRN research projects focusing on various aspects of the scientific inquiry over the last one, two years. Uh, the first panel will look at news and media coverage of the pandemic and the impact that reporting has. 
The second panel will look at masks, vaccinations, and compliance, how people felt about these changes in their lives and how they dealt with them as well uh, as, as sort of general perceptions. We'll then hear about the economic and financial impacts of the pandemic, as well as the impact on work, all of which we're all very much aware of, I believe. Tomorrow, we will then hear about the impact of the pandemic um, and what it, how it affected the most vulnerable and marginalized groups, and also further what happened to the education of the future generations that are supposed to steer this planet towards the better. In the fifth panel, we'll hear about policies, interventions, and local context, which will provide us with a mix of local, contextually embedded insights, as well as proposed solutions or a way forward. And we will conclude with a very personal experience that all of us have made, how the pandemic affect our emotions and well-being, and how different individuals manage to cope or not cope with the changes that came along during crisis. On this occasion, I want to thank all of our speakers in advance already uh, for contributing to this conference. And I also want to thank our fantastic session chairs for helping us to have a fruitful dialogue. A final thank you, of course, goes out to the administration team, to Sadi Lalou and to Olivier Bion, and uh, to all of you who are attending who really make this conference a conference. So we're very much looking forward to having you all and to some very insightful and fruitful discussions. Now, I believe we are five minutes early, which is rare, which is very good. But what we'll, what we'll have as our first step on our, our inaugurational uh, keynote is going to be Professor Raouf Pusikin from the Rennes School of Business and uh, myself School of Economics. And we'll be hearing about economic epidemiology um, and how some emerging ideas and approaches could move our, uh, our understanding of this forward. Um, perhaps, perhaps we wait another moment so that people who show up, show up late don't miss out on your presentation, Raouf. Is that okay with you? Perfect. And, and if I can add something, Maxi, well, thank you for uh, all this, this uh, housekeeping uh, in, information and, um, and, and all the work you've done before. Uh, um, may I mention that uh, Professor Busekin is also a member of our scientific advisory board. And he, so he's, he's not only a great economist, but he's been uh, very uh, helpful from the start to the launch of uh, the WPRN uh, network. Thank you. And then these are always a little bit awkward moments uh, when we're online and we can't just say, okay, come out for a coffee because uh, <laughs> otherwise we never know when people will restart. But um, it, it is, I think, a good sign that we, uh, we keep time even from the beginning because usually these things start late mm -hmm. and, uh, and therefore, um, uh, people don't have the time to uh, to discuss uh, enough. I would I would actually like to intervene and suggest that this very rarely happens. Usually, we're already late five yeah. minutes after the first agenda point. So I'm I'm very happy that we're still very much on schedule. Yes, but, but as you probably noticed, the fact that we're all on Zoom now has changed our habits of arriving and starting late in, in many countries. Um, and, uh, and we're setting up new standards here uh, of, of people uh, being here. And, and I also noticed that uh, uh, while um, I've attended a series now of, of this kind of uh, online conferences, which have become uh, for the better or for the worse, uh, our new standard during COVID times. And uh, very often there's few people or they, they just come and go. And uh, for the beginning of a session, I see quite a lot of people uh, for such a conference. The fact, of course, that you, you can see things and, and you know that it's recorded makes people less uh, present sometimes. But I think we have really to uh, get used to this new kind of standard because this is going to be our life because of COVID, because of uh, uh, FlixCam, because of CO2 emissions, because of budget restrictions. And uh, we have to find new ways. Uh, so so I'm, I'm not sure how much all of us do realize that we are in a massive transition of how we make science. That this is, this is going to be a new paradigm of how we work together uh, with different time zones, uh, with people we only see online. The next step is going to be in VR as avatars. We started doing this uh, in our institute. Uh, things are, are, are changing and it, it, it's not just a, something happened and then we'll get back to normal. It has completely changed already. 
I think these are great observations already for our starting point. And I think one of the one of the key comments that we maybe can come back at the end of the conference is whether we did manage to stay on time, uh, and whether we have actually instituted these new these new rules, or whether we revert back to the traditional. 